Business Brain, the show for entrepreneurs. In fact, it's Business Brain, the Entrepreneur's Podcast, episode 408 for Wednesday, November 30th, 2022. <music> Greetings, folks, and welcome to Business Brain, the show, like I said, for entrepreneurs. Sponsors for this episode include Shopify, where shopify.com slash SBS will get you your 14-day trial. We'll talk more in depth about Shopify in a minute. For now, using my business brain here in Durham, New Hampshire, I'm Dave Hamilton. And I'm getting ready to use my business brain here in Lafayette, <laughs> California. <laughs> I've been doing other stuff this morning, but now I'm ready. I'm excited now you're ready. To be here. It happens. Yeah. yeah, it happens. It does. Life's distractions. I don't know. Even yes. even in life, I find I'm using my business brain often. So it's just kind True. of how it goes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I guess it's a, a a way of thinking all the time. I just got back. You know, we had our Thanksgiving holiday. We were up at, uh, in Lake Tahoe and had a lot of people around with us. And I, I, we, I talked business like a lot. <laughs> no. <laughs> Not like a lot. A lot. <laughs> and... Uh, I, uh, it's, I really enjoy it. I love it. And some of my cousins that were up there are all, you know, serial entrepreneurs that have tried uh, many, many different things, failed many times, succeeded sometimes. And yep. so, um, being around people that you can have those discussions with is really rewarding and, uh, challenging as well. It's, you know, challenging some of the, the, my own, um, assumptions. Yeah. Uh, things that the way I think things are and listening to the way that, you know, uh, uh, the way other people see it. Yeah. it. yeah. It's, it was, it was really rewarding. I, I really enjoy it. it no, great. you're, you're right. It is rare, uh, for people in, in our shoes to find other people to talk with. And it's, it's not that we're yeah. special or anything. I mean, I think I'm special, no, but, no. um, yeah. but it, it's just that we're less common, right? Uh, you know, if I, Correct. if I wind up at a barbecue, uh, you know, in my neighborhood, most of my neighbors are, uh, you know, work for someone else. Like I, I, we did right. this thing. One of my, one of my neighbors every year on Thanksgiving morning organizes, uh, what they call the, well, there's a street near me they name it after, but it's like the Thanksgiving, they call it the plotter where everybody just gets together with coffee and their dogs and their nice. kids and just walks like a loop around the neighborhood at like 9 a.m. on Thanksgiving, the idea is... That's really cool. Yeah, you get up, you go out, you see your neighbors before you put the turkey in, and then everybody sort of goes on their separate ways for the day. And it's great. Um, I, I went, and it was it's fine. It, yeah, and it was actually really nice. It was more than fine. It was fantastic to get out and see people. But the conversations, you know, they ask me what I'm up to, and it's like, okay, well, I'm going to tell you. But like it, it's it's gonna be. But you're so, not. Yeah. It's gonna be so different that I, I'm gonna I'm gonna keep it short. I, you know, I'm you not gonna to. I'm not gonna go in depth on this. Let's talk about our kids. Ask me about my kids. What they're up to. It's much easier to say. My daughter's living in Italy, which is equally as like people look at you like with your like your head screwed on wrong or something when you say that. But at least it's something they can understand. And I, I remember. Uh, I mean, it's happened several times. I have one friend who is literally a billionaire. You'd never know it if you met him. And I called him and asked him for advice about something. And compared to what he deals with on a regular basis, what I was asking about was nothing. It was a huge deal to me. But com in comparison, I expected it to be nothing to him. I'm like, hey, man, do you, you know, if you have some time, I'd really appreciate your advice. Yeah. And he was so excited. And we spent like an hour and a half on the phone together digging awesome. into my stuff. And I was like, man, thank you so much. He's like, are you kidding me? He's like, I have no one else I can talk to about this. You know, he, he in fact, he said, he made a comment. He's like, I'm an old white guy with a jet. He said, ah. you know, 50 years ago, that was a good thing. Nowadays, I might as ah. well say I'm Hitler. He's like, I just can't yeah, talk yeah. to people about this. I'm like, yeah, yeah I, I get it. Like I told, and so uh, he like it. It is important where I'm going with this is it, it's important to find people, fellow business owners, people that think like you or at least similar in the same realm as you that, that can challenge you and that you can challenge 
and have honest yeah. conversations as opposed to having to do like what I did with my neighbors. Where it's like, oh yeah, business is good. You know, we sold this business this year and this, that, and the other thing. And then like that, like, and, and, yeah. Yeah. I think it is critically important to get, you need to build that peer group around you. Yeah. Um, it is one of the reasons why I enjoy this show so much because I get, I can talk with you about this stuff. We get feedback from our, our, um, uh, our listeners, Audience, yeah. which we've been getting more and more and you know, great engagement. And it, it keeps, uh, it keeps me sharp and I, you can do it different ways. You know, of we've course. had uh, people on here that business owners that are, they pay to be part of, you know, various groups. We've had the business owner of one of those groups on the show before the, uh, CEO round table, I guess yeah. it is. Yeah. If I call it correctly. And, that's great, and I love that too, and that's very uh, important. But but one thing I really took my takeaway from this weekend was being in a casual environment where, and also we're all in the same building. We're in my house, sure, and and so you would have this conversation. You you know maybe you're having a a beer, a cocktail, something like that, or in the morning you get up and you're having coffee and you're making breakfast together and getting things done and you get to continue and kind of pick at, Hey, you mentioned this last night and I thought about this and you know, what about that? Or Hey, here's a resource for you. I, that's one thing I noticed. We were exchanging resources here. Mm. Here's a guy you should, you should do this. And then one, one of the people that were there was talking about, they're starting a business to connect. I guess there's some, uh, funds left from COVID recovery all about employee retention. I've heard but, about uh, this. Yeah. It, it, yes. Is this and, something and, we can talk about? Like, do you know about this? A little bit. Apparently there, if, if your business revenue dropped a certain percentage, and okay. I, I don't hold me to that. It might be yeah. 50%. It might be 70%. I don't know. Sure. What it is. Uh, sure. Sure. It could be 30%. And you kept your employees, uh, a certain percentage of your employees employed, you can, you would be eligible to uh, get some uh, access to some funds. I think it's grant money huh. to help you recover from COVID. And there's, there's, I'm sure there's a bunch of restrictions, but the, the business opportunity for this person I was talking to was that, well, uh, a lot of these small businesses don't know about this. It's not promoted. So we want, we're, we want to help them and uh, get help them get access and get through the, you know, uh, the red tape and all that kind of stuff. And of course, I mentioned, well, you know, I happen to host a podcast that reaches, you know, thousands and tens of thousands of small business owners every week. And uh, I should give you the name of my advertising company. Yeah, <laughs> because exactly. uh, so we go. So it's great. Just to, it's just kind of a. There's just, it, it's in the air, you know, and you're intermingling different ideas. And I certainly didn't go there to pitch anything and they didn't go there to pitch me anything. You know, we're just kind of talking about ideas and what we think of things. Everything from crazy restaurant ideas to, you know, this COVID recovery stuff. To, so I really enjoy it and I highly recommend it that you put the effort as a small business owner, entrepreneur, startup founder to surround yourself with a group of people that can think like you, they don't necessarily need to work with you or no, no. In you. fact, it's Probably almost, they don't. it's yeah. better. Yeah. I mean, if it works out that you wind up doing something together, so be it, but it's almost yes. better if, if there is that arm's length uh, distance yeah. between your businesses, like, like you, you want to be close as people, but your businesses, if they're the more unrelated, they are the better because that way, you're, you're not getting advice that's, you know, even potentially self-serving in one direction or another. It's correct. Just, it's just, it's like what you and I do. I mean, you and I have some businesses yeah. obviously that are together and then others that have nothing to do with one another. And it's the conversations. Right. I actually look forward to the conversations about the latter, the businesses that have nothing to do with each other more than are like, Oh yeah. Okay. Well, oh, crap. We got to do stuff for the, the show. Yeah. Okay. I, you know, oh, I mean, yeah, that's fine. Get a different insight, but right. it's a different yeah, insight. I, yeah. 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 And I find, like to your point about talking to your neighbors and I love people. It's awesome. And I, you know, I, I go to the dog park every day and talk yeah. with people. Hang, we have a certain group we hang out with. And, but I find as I always talk about on the show, I love storytelling. So when they ask me, you know, what you've done, what was, what's your career, da, da, da. Well, I, I have a certain kind of set of stories that I tell because I think it's, it's easier to give it out in snippets because if you, like you said, if you start, talking about this 
very wide uh, breadth of things you're working on, things you've tried, things you've succeeded at, things you've failed. Two things happen in my my experience. One is they get this glazed over look and they're just like, this guy's a total flake. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right? yeah. Yeah. And because they don't know me and they don't know that, oh, we, we have been somewhat successful and some of these things actually worked. And so you get that to happen or they get this kind of excited look on their face and they, they don't, they can't believe some of the things that I'm telling them. Right. And so they're excited about that. Well, neither of those things are, are super helpful. I mean, it's fun uh, to, to, convince someone that you're not a super flake and it's kind of fun to get people po asking how you did all this stuff. Right. But, uh, those are great, but it doesn't sharpen your business brain, you know, not uh, usually. So I mean, sometimes if somebody asks, wait, how does that work? I, I like yeah. those conversations because it forces me to do yeah, some so reflection. It I mean, yeah. it, it's that yeah. whole, you learn when but teaching is one of the best ways to learn something, right? You know, as, as I'm yeah. teaching someone else, I learn way more because I have to take what I know. And I mean, this isn't me. This is everybody. When you teach something, you have to take what you know and rephrase it. You have to process it so that you know it cold. And usually the process of telling someone that is, you know, Nothing really helps to cement that. And I often have insights in those conversations, but those are rare. It's, it, generally speaking, my neighbors aren't like, wait, how does that work? You know, I've had a few yeah, and then they yeah. wind up, usually those people wind up going into business for themselves uh, eventually, which is great. Yeah. You know, it's like, yeah, hopefully you've helped them with us, you know, the way you tell a story. And, yeah. and I always, I always, you know, add the phrase like, well, you know, after I tell them the story and they're like, wow, that's incredible. You did that. And, da -da -da -da. and they're like, well, remember, it's like talking about your kids now that they're grown, you, 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 you kind of gloss over the <laughs> yeah gloss over all the rough edges here. Yeah. Yes, I I was in the heavy equipment business and I drove a forty five ton crane down from one part of California to the next. Yada yada yada, <laughs> and you know all this crazy stuff that I've tried to do. Uh, but you're only getting the the fine points, the you're very the highlight high reel stuff. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the highlight reel. That's exactly. Yeah. And my wife is if my wife is there, I could see her kind of rolling her eyes because she's heard these stories. You know countless oh, times same yeah and, and then but if someone's new in the crowd uh i you know it's like oh here we go I, know, I, I know i i have my my list of i have my set list i just thought yeah, start crossing things list. off yeah i like that it is it's a set list it's so. a set but list. it's great and yep. so definitely need to connect with the group uh you know one way or another i think the casual way is really powerful but maybe the pros can help you as well Hey, you ever go to one of those uh, comedy open mic nights? One thing that's really cool about those is that they make it possible for anyone to step up and try stand-up. And the thing I love about our sponsor, Shopify, is how it's the all-in-one commerce platform that makes it simple for anyone to step up, start, run, and grow a successful business. Shopify makes it simple to sell to anyone from anywhere. So whether your thing is vintage teas or recipes for ghee, start selling with Shopify and join the platform simplifying commerce for millions of your favorite businesses worldwide. It's true. Lots of people use Shopify. In fact, Shannon and I have used Shopify with various ventures in the past. And the reason is they make it so easy. With Shopify, you create an online store that's in your vibe. You discover new customers and you can grow the following that keeps them coming back. Shopify has all of your sales channels sorted so your business keeps growing from an in-person POS to an all-in-one e-commerce platform, even across social media platforms. They've got 24-7 support and free libraries full of educational content. This is why Shopify's got you every step of the way. And this is also why every minute new sellers around the world hear that sound when they make their first sale on Shopify. And you will too. Go on. You can try Shopify for free and start selling anywhere. Sign up for a free trial at shopify.com slash SBS, all lowercase. Go to shopify.com slash SBS to start selling online today. Shopify.com slash SBS. And our thanks to Shopify for sponsoring this episode. All right. Hey, uh, you mentioned some feedback, Shannon, and we did, in fact, get feedback at businessbrain.show has started filling up 
Greg sent in a note that I wanted to read through and then I, I want to answer his question too. Uh, he says, uh, thanks for producing the uh, show for the past seven years. I started listening around the beginning of the pandemic and went back and listened to all the past episodes. It's freaking amazing. Wow. Man. Yeah. That's impressive. It is. Uh, he says, I look forward to each week and appreciate all the information you provide. The show helps me think about business in general. And I learned something new every week. All right, this is good. Yeah, this is, like, in fact, just what we were talking about kind of in our intro segment today. The show helps. Uh, I apologize for not sending in feedback sooner. No worries. And and if you haven't sent in feedback yet, you still have a chance. You can, like, it's we're here. Feedback at businessbrain.show. Uh, Greg continues, I don't have a business background. I worked for the government conducting research and providing public education for over 20 years I educated, consulted, and collaborated with various types of small and large businesses through my government work. I left that career in response to continued funding cuts. I worked for a local small business for three years before starting my own. Your show helped me prepare me for starting and running a business. This I, like this warms my heart. I'm, I'm going to be in me tears too. in a minute. Perfect. Man. This is great. Yeah. Uh, he says, uh, it provided me with encouragement and confidence in making the decision to leave behind a paycheck for a new life as a business owner. Freaking amazing. Like, woo. Uh, That's what he we're says, looking for. Yeah. Well, we're also looking for feedback. Good news. Greg's yeah. here to deliver. My feedback for the show is to try and find a balance with the different formats that you've used and are considering. Too much of one thing can lead to disinterest. So I suggest maintaining a variety. I've enjoyed you both leading the podcast more than focusing on interviews. Interviews, in Greg's mind, should be reserved for outstanding guests that offer something unique to the listening audience. I realize that you both have limited experience as an employee, but some of us listening have primarily been an employee. A major part of my reasons for leaving my various employers has been a lack of respect, lack of pay, lack of consideration, and more. When I took my last job, I told myself that this was my last job, and if it didn't work out, I would start a business. And that's what happened. I've managed people in my past jobs, so I understand that employees can be problematic. I also know that great employees can be treated poorly by management as well. I think that you cover two sides of the story, but on rare occasions, your comments are not as considerate of employees' perspectives or situations. That's fair. Uh, yeah. I know the show's target audience is business owners, but I imagine there are a lot of employees listening too. That's fair. Yeah, the, the aspirational business owners, like, like Greg used to be. Uh, he says, I assume that I am just sensitive to specific scenarios that apply to my past experience. Of course, that makes sense. He says, I've listened to a lot of different podcasts related to business. I do my research and learn what I need to know to make decisions. Uh, I started my business 18 months ago and I'm operating my own without on my own without employees. I'm a consulting and service based business and I'm growing the business by increasing the number of clients and performing services for them at their homes or commercial properties. At times, it feels like I am growing too slowly and I would like to speed up the process. I know that eventually I need to hire employees to help me. However, I am barely able to pay myself because I continue to reinvest in the business. So it seems like it might be too soon to hire help. And he says, I feel like it's too risky to take a loan now and I'm not interested in getting an investor. With that, I suspect many small business owners are in similar situations. I observe, I observe many small business owners, friends, that never take that next step to hire employees, and they continue to do everything themselves. I don't want to do everything myself forever. Physically, it can be difficult. It would be helpful if, uh, in a future show, you could cover more details about making major decisions within the business, like when to hire that first employee, and how to manage risks at the same time. With your experience, it seems like making difficult decisions is easy for you. In my situation, my business can't fail because it's a culmination of my life's work, and it's how I support my family. I know entrepreneurs would build, buy, and sell businesses, but right now that isn't my goal. Uh, and he says, I hope this is the feedback you're looking for. I couldn't have asked for something better. So thank you, Greg. That's yes, terrific. I, I terrific. will, I, I, I want to turn it over to you because I've been talking for- There's a lot to unpack. For, for, yeah. yeah, but the, I do want to say something because he says, and, and, and he, he's probably right, but I don't necessarily feel this way. He's, he's, again, he's probably correct. But he said, you know, in his situation, his business can't fail because it's a culmination of his life's work. I feel exactly the same way about all of the businesses that I've have and that I've ever had. And if one of them fails, I feel like, oh, my gosh, like this is going to be terrible. Like I am always working to salvage whatever I can do and keep things afloat, even though Greg's probably right. 
I could suffer a few failures now, even on a semi-large scale, and probably come out the other side okay. Different than 20 years ago when, you know, when I was starting companies. But I don't feel that way. I certainly don't operate with that line of thinking. And as I was reading Greg's thing, I'm like, no, I'm the same way. It's like, well, I'm, that might not be true, but it's how I feel. And I, I, I think that hunger and that I, almost I, desperation is the best word I can use to describe it. Although I, I know that I'm not operating desperately, but it, I feel like I am. And I, I think that hunger is what keeps me pushing things forward. I don't know. I, so I just wanted yeah. to share that. I, I don't know what I'm trying to say here. <laughs> yeah, no, no. I, I think that, um, yeah, like I said, there's there's a lot to unpack here. But first, let's talk about the comment about employees. And, yeah. and I would agree with, with Greg's comments. There, there are specific situations where, you know, there are awesome, you know, terrific employees that maybe they don't get treated well, that don't get paid enough. Yep. Uh, and then there's poor employees that, don't get fired quickly enough or don't, you know, uh, oh, yeah. get paid too much. Right. So it's specific, but, but I would say, um, if you go up to, to businessbrain.show and search for employee or culture, we've tried to talk and I'm not defending this, but I want to point it out that we understand the power of having a great or building a great place to work. And th that's, there's no way to be successful and to create a, a, a great business unless you surround yourself with great employees and they're treated well and they, they have a path. I mean, we talk all the time about career paths, even for very small businesses. And I think you're right, Greg, your focus is really unique. And when you're ready, and I want to talk about your first employee as well, you will be a much better boss because, uh, Yes. You understand this and you were an employee and, you know, it's been a long, long time since I was an employee, my college days. And I would suggest, you know, if, if you haven't worked or been an employee for a long, long time too, is find someone like Greg mentions that has and, and get their feedback once in a while. In my case, you know, my wife was an employee for, you know, decades before she came to work for one of our businesses and, and took it over. And she would often play devil's advocate when I was talking about doing certain things. And I learned a tremendous amount from her perspective. So mm. um, there's a lot up, up on the website about that, this employees and treating them and it, salaries and bonuses and stuff. So it's interesting. I, I, as, as we're chatting here, I searched for hiring employee on our, our website. You can go to businessbrain.show and, and you know, we've got a search that actually works. And I found an episode, the most recent time we talked about this, was episode 356 hiring your first employee was what we titled it, which made it easy for me to find this go. episode is going to release. Uh, we're recording it on Tuesday, the 29th. It's going to release on November 30th. That episode was released almost exactly a year ago on December 1st of 21. Uh, so it's been almost a year since we've really dug into this. And I, I, I think it's an important thing to talk about on a regular basis for us because it is the hardest thing, I think, in the initial growth of not only your business, but your career as an entrepreneur, uh, because you can't scale if you can't scale. And for most of us, scaling means having other people there <coughs> to do the work. Everything all right there, Shannon? I heard. I heard. Yeah, sorry. Right. OK, yeah, it's all good. No, nope, sorry about that. Uh, and, and, you know, I, I don't want to necessarily entirely rehash that episode from a year ago, but I, I think it's okay to talk about this again. It, I, you know, it's, yeah. it's an important, it's important. topic. It, I, it is. I will start, I'm looking at my notes from a year ago and I will start with the end um, because what we talked about at the end of that episode was who should be your first employee? What role should you fill? And I, I what I said a year ago, I still stick with, and that's, a salesperson. And the reason I say that is twofold. Number one, your business already knows how to do what it knows how to do. Um, most businesses and, and this, you know, there might, there's going to be some asterisks out there, but most businesses wind up, you get a, a surge of customers and, and then, and this is your fear too. Then you will have some attrition 
and you don't want to hire more worker bees to do to service the customers when you don't have a machine in place to replace the customers that are invariably going to fall by the wayside, right? You, you get your initial surge, yeah. but you've got to have an engine that brings more customers in. And you already know, even just as you, Greg, you know how to do the work. So the trick is bringing customers and out of the gate, you figured it out. You've, you know, 18 months in, you're bringing in customers, you're bringing in a little bit of revenue, the night and you're you're afraid I, and I get it I understand why I would be too in fact I always still am to this day you're afraid that if you bring someone in you won't be able to pay them well a salesperson <laughs> is usually a pretty easy person to justify paying my guess is you could hire lots of different roles and someone that that looked at it objectively from the outside would say oh it makes perfect sense you should be paying that person but it's hard when it's the only money you know, and now you're giving it to someone else after painstakingly working for over a year to just build up some revenue. And so you bring in a salesperson and you, you know, you could pay him. I mean, you could pay him a hundred percent commission. It depends on your business and depends on the person. Uh, there are many salespeople that prefer to work on a hundred percent commission because they want to be in control of their own destiny. But if you, if that's not the way you want to run things fine, you pay him a, a, you know, a base salary plus, a, a, you know, a commission bonus or something like that. You can structure it. And, and we're happy to talk through that on the show here too, if you'd like, but it's easy to, I can tell you this, it's easy to pay a salesperson and it's easy to know when to stop paying a salesperson because they're not generating revenue. Their whole job is about bringing in revenue. And if they're doing that, it's easy to give them a, a, a percentage of that effectively as their pay. And if they're not doing that, it's easy to give them a pink slip. So I I, I stick with this, uh, uh, that a salesperson is the easy first hire. It might not be exactly the right one for your business, but I would rule that out before going to whatever you think might be the next best first hire. Yeah, my take on it's a little different. Of course it is. I was always... I was always the sales guy, right? I was always the one that could bring in new business, but fair. I was not I was not good at the other stuff, the back end, the logistics, the you know, you know uh, I could be the rainmaker, but everything behind the scenes that had to happen to actually fulfill, yeah. that was that was not my my uh, my specialty. So I'm gonna, I want to I want to stop you right there. Yeah. I just I, yes or no, but it might go longer than that. Did did you ever have salespeople working for you, or was it always just you? Oh yeah. Oh okay. All right. No, we. Oh yeah. Yeah yeah. Okay. We have, we definitely had salespeople. All but right, great. When you're talking about hiring the first one. your first employee yeah, or for your you first group, you didn't need that. Uh, yeah. Yeah, because I we had the business and the relationship. I was always the relationship guy. Yep. Um, but I needed the the behind the scenes magic to happen so i well let me let me back up yeah I, no I wanna, no i'm I sorry wanna, i derailed you so it's okay yeah, thank you it's okay yeah. i, I want to talk about this uh this issue of how do i afford it what do i do you know uh how do i know you know so greg i i let, let's talk about safety nets for a minute mm. um very important. And and looking back at starting various companies, okay, when I started my first one, my safety net uh, was that I had very low expenses, right? I was young. Everything I owned about that time probably could fit in my, my truck. Uh, and I met this wonderful woman who went out and got a job and basically covered the bills and gave me the runway to experiment and start my first significant business. Um, I had some other fits and starts before, but the small ones. Sure. So that was my, that was my safety net. Then when I was ready to start another company, the safety net was, well, I had saved some money and I had a bunch of resources from this other company. And so creating safety nets is, is really important. You've, you know, you either sock some money away. So you know that, well, if I can't take much out when maybe this is what you've done, Greg, um, over your career working for someone else. And so you can tap into that to get yourself going and, or someone else is generating revenue that you can lean on for a while while you get your feet under you. So safety nets are important. Um, 
And the business you're building now could be a safety net for you to do something else down the road. You just, you never know where it's going to go. That's true. But, yeah. 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 That's right. Yeah. yeah. And so I would do a couple things. And, and this is in that episode about hiring your first employee, but it's worth mentioning again is go order uh, this book. It's called The E-Myth. And if you were in my office looking at me, you would see me holding it up right now because it is never far out of reach. Uh, it's actually called The E-Myth Revisited by Michael Gerber. And it is one of the most important aspects of this book is uh, creating an organizational chart and putting your name in every box when you're started because you don't have anybody else to put in there. And so fill your name in and then think about where you're lacking. Are you lacking in that sales uh, area where you need new customers and that's, you know, Dave's advice, which makes a ton of sense. Or is it like my case where you're doing great bringing customers in, but you just don't have the time during the day to, to actually get the work done and you need some people that can shore that up. So then you can think about the type of person you need to, to hire that's going to have the biggest impact on your business quickly, right? Cause all of a sudden you're going to hire them and, uh, you're going to have more expenses. And, you know, another thing to consider is can you, can you hire someone as a contractor? You know, it depends on where you, what state you live in. And there's lots of rules about that, but I've done this a lot. And it, depending upon your, your business and how it works, maybe there's an opportunity to save some money in the beginning and have more flexibility without making this massive commitment on salary or hours uh, and use a contractor. So that's something to think about, but get a copy of the E-Myth. It will help you, frame this concept of what this first employee would do. Uh, I, I highly recommend it. Yeah. I, yeah. Smart. I, it yeah. makes perfect sense. Yeah. If you're, if you, if you have the confidence to know that you're bringing in business and you need people to service it, well then, then the answer is also obvious for you. But if it's not obvious, the salesperson, I, I think it's a, it's a great place. Like yeah. I said, it's it, rule it I out. It. You, you very quickly for you, ruled it out. And that's, that's the exercise, right? It's like, Oh, I don't need that. I'm, I, I have the confidence. We have plenty of business. Okay, great. Now you know that you've got money that you can pay people with. Right. So go yeah, do that. Yep. That's right. Yep. I, I'm a perfect example of that. There's that phrase in the uh, business world, hire an assistant and double your salary. That, that totally worked because I just couldn't keep track of it all. Yeah. And, um, but I was good at talking to people and getting out, opening new relationships and, but I needed that assistant. And then the assistant said, okay, now we need to hire this a person, do this person, do that. And they helped me build this, build up the organization. And that became my safety net that I leaned into for everything for the next 25, 30 years. Amazing. I just repeated, repeated that concept over and over, uh, failed miserably a number of times, but sure. succeeded enough to where I'm here today. Yeah. 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 You, you know, made it through. Yeah. You don't have to. That I'm, yeah. I, I always, like I said, I'm always sort of in, in some part of me is in desperation mode. It's, it's just how I operate, right? It's that small, smart, that actually. scrappy, yeah. hungry. Yeah. I, I just need to keep pushing forward. Uh, but it's, it's, it's the thing that fuels me. So yeah. Makes, yeah. Yeah. That's how I, it works. I think that's the, it, it is scrappy, hungry, uh, desperate. Those are really good, um, Good things to 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 think about. Um, I just tried to search for this in our our online database, but I couldn't find it. But the, we've done a number of shows where I talked about this guy who lived on the street as I drove to work every morning, mm. and I just thought I would just remember thinking, boy, you know, if I really screw up, that I could be, you know, just like that guy. You know, I don't know his story or whatever, but uh, it highly motivated me as I drove to work each day seeing this person. Um, and, and I thought, man, that's a, that's a struggle on its own. So I, I like that being worried a little bit. That's, a, I think that's an important, uh, tactic. <laughs> it really is. Yeah. Yeah. It, I, I, it, right. It, you don't, I get nervous when I, I mean, I say that I'm always in desperation mode and, and I'm scrappy and hungry and always driving when I get even more nervous is when I find myself complacent. Uh, you know, if I'm comfortable with how things are, I know that I'm about to be hit, you know, with that, that random Tuesday blindside because they happen. It's how it goes. And, and you get used to those two. Um, 
I always, I always say, you know, one of my earlier businesses, I mean, it's one that's sort of weaved a thread through everything I've done, but it was, um, helping people with their computers, being a, a computer consultant, yeah. if you would. And I, I, when I was doing that full time, I realized that, yeah, I had the skills to do it and I, I could, had plenty of clients. Like none of that was the problem, but what my actual job was, was prioritizing other people's emergencies, right? Because people didn't call me unless they had an emergency and, and I had to choose who got my time first, right? It was just a fact of life, you know, and, but I, I often think about my experience doing that and getting comfortable prioritizing other people's emergencies, especially when I am in a position where I have to prioritize my own emergencies. And it's like, yep, okay, I've seen enough emergencies, so many that weren't mine, so I was able to see them objectively. But of course, I've seen my own emergencies too. It's how life and business goes. And, uh, and I'm like, okay, I know how to breathe. I know how to be like, all right, this is not what I expected today. This is, you know, potentially terrible, but, um, we're going to, we're going to break it down. We're going to see what, you know, what we can do, how we might move forward. And we're going to, we're going to try something because we're not just going to sit around. So, um, yeah. yeah. And, and I, I think that that doesn't mean you shouldn't be confident. No confident. Right? I mean, is, Greg has yeah decades of of experience under his belt, and he knows how to be a great manager. And so, probably knows be, more than you, you and me. <laughs> yes, probably. Uh, and so, confidence is really great, uh, but you don't want to get cocky, right? Uh, you know. So there's that there's that difference. Um, and, and you know. So Greg, I, I hope we answered that question for you. Talked about employment. Um, you know. Keep us in the loop on how your business does, um, you know, reach out and, and uh, we'd be glad to help with as much business therapy as, uh, as we can. Yeah, it, it, this is, you know, uh, that was one of the names that we tossed around when we came up yeah. with uh, when we changed to business brain was business therapy, because it's what we it's it's one of the things we really like to do for each other. We do it all the time. And any opportunity we get to do it for any of you would be fantastic. So thank you, Greg. Thanks to everybody who sent stuff in. We have another comment from Jeff, a uh, question from Jeff that we didn't get to. We will, I promise. Uh, we've got that queued up now for next week. So, yep, it's it's coming. Keep your feedback coming in. It's feedback at businessbrain.show. And uh, we can all be, uh, you know, increase our levels of being business brainiacs together. I think it's great stuff. You got anything else, man? Are we good? I'm good. It's All great. Right. Great episode. I love uh, keeping myself sharp. Yeah. Oh, for Talking sure. about all this stuff. Yeah. Thanks again for listening, folks. Make sure you check out shopify.com slash SBS. Get that 14-day trial and check it out. And hey, do us a favor. In addition to sending in your feedback, keep living that charmed life.